without murmuring and disputing. When you are tired, when you are strong, when you are feeling energized, enthusiastic, when you are feeling a little bit weak, without strength, do all things without murmurings and disputing. When everybody is praising you, congratulating you, appreciating you, lifting you up, when people turn away from you, and they don't seem to appreciate what you have done, and you know you've done something good, something great, and then you have another opportunity, do all things without murmurings or disputing. When the manner that we've been taking every day seems to be losing its taste in your in your mouth, you see this light food manner, and when it appears, it's not having the same taste as it had in the first week. When the manner appeared, don't grumble. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Don't you murmur to your neighbor. Don't murmur to your wife. Don't murmur to your husband. Don't murmur about the church. About the leadership of the church. About our coordinators and group coordinators. About our overseers and pastors. Our leaders. Don't murmur. Just do what you are told to do. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. That she may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. Those are the people, the great privilege of restored sons. That she may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Among whom ye shine. In the Lord, you are shining in the light, light in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not drawn in vain, neither labored in vain. I pray that this privilege of restored sons will be upon everybody in Jesus' name. Point number two, the glorious power of renewed saints the glorious power of renewed saints as the Lord has brought us together for this power for your hour retreat and the Lord has revealed so much to us showing us how we can have power for our hour I pray everything that you have heard from all that our ministers and preachers, everything that they, that they minister to us in direct preaching or in every other way, the encouragement they have given us, I pray that that power will remain. And when the hour comes for the power to be manifested, it will manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. And those of us who have ministered, preachers and other ministers who have ministered in various ways, when our own hour, our hour of trial, our hour of temptation, our hour at the crossroad when it comes, because it comes to everybody, the power for your hour will be made available in Jesus' name. The glorious power of renewed saints. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 3. Yea, he loves the people. All his saints are in thine hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. And you see here what the Lord talks about. The people that sit down at the feet of the Lord. And they receive the words of the Lord. They become saints that when we sit down and we receive the word of God, it transforms our lives. We're no more sinners. We're converted. We're changed. 
you are clean through the word which has spoken unto you. The word regenerates us, recreates us, renews us, reforms us. And because of the inroad and the power and the effect of that word in our lives, we become saints, not sinners. Look at that verse again, chapter 33, Deuteronomy verse 3. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. They sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. That's what makes us saints. If we reject the word of God, even though we're sitting and we're listening, if we don't take it in, accept it, believe it, meditate on it, act on it, obey it, practice it, preach it, proclaim it, defend it, hold on to it fast. If we don't do that, the word is not going to have an effect in our lives and the word is not going to make us saints. But the word of God will make you saints. Psalm 50 verse 5. The people that enjoy the glorious power are the people who are renewed by the word of the Lord. Psalm 50 verse 5, gather my saints together unto me. This, that's a kind of gathering that sinners don't have any seat to sit down. There's a kind of gathering that sinners don't have any place preserved for them. There's a kind of gathering, a special gathering, when God wants to give out the inheritance of children in the family, of saints in the congregation, that sinners have no place at all. And if you're going to be part of that glorious power, to be gathered together with the people of God, you have to abandon your sin, be cleansed, become righteous, become saved, become holy, become pure, become purified, become refined, become renewed, become sanctified. And that's why it says, gather my saints. They're not the saints of the world. They're not the saints of a particular denomination that will canonize and that will make people saints after they have died. But the Lord is saying, those are their saints, but I have my own saints, the people who are touched by the world transformed by the word the people are turned around by the word gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you have believed in the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ and because of that he has made you a saint and let me point out something to you in ephesians ephesians chapter one you see this uh, epistle to the ephesians is so wonderful and I say, Lord, here is for the victorious believer. It's for the energetic believer. It's for the believers that will know their position in Christ, their place in Christ, their possibilities in Christ, their power in Christ. And let me show you that in every chapter, it calls upon the people of God and it calls them saints. Chapter 1, they're saints. Chapter 2, they're saints. Chapter 3, they're saints. Chapter 4, they are saints. Chapter 5, they are saints. Chapter 6, he still calls them saints. Chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of the calling of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Inheritance in the saints. You see, it is when you turn away from your sin, you become a child of God, and your life is renewed, and your life is transformed. You become a sage. That's when you have the inheritance. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 9, from verse 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. And of the household of God. Paul the Apostle wanted everybody in the church at Ephesus to understand that when you are called and you come in, you become a saint. Look at chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 18. 
may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breast and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that she might be filled with all the fullness of God the people that come to receive the fullness of that inheritance they are the people who are saints chapter 1 saints chapter 2 saints chapter 3 saints then he tells us in verse 19 to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that she may be filled with all the fullness of God now unto him verse 20 that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that she has conceived according to the power that worketh in us says chapter 4 in chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers but thank God in our church all these various categories are there we may just call them pastors, we may call them teachers, we may call them evangelists, we may call them soul winners, we may call them coordinators, we may call them group coordinators, we may call them overseers, but this is who they are. And it tells us the reason why God has called us into such a ministry. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints. The ministry has called us to whether we preach from the pulpit here or we preach in the house fellowship or we preach in our zones or we preach in the group of, of districts or we preach in the whole region or we preach in the nation is for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ and if you mention it over and over that we are saints and the ministers and the members that to have that understanding that we are saints and we need to understand then that the purpose of ministry and the reason for ministry and the effect of ministry is to make people saints chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 1 chapter 5 verse 1 be ye therefore followers of God as their children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his who smelly savor but fornication and on all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you tell me the rest has become a saints every chapter called to be saints and it says that fornication should not be mentioned well agree with that well agree with that we always say once somebody is born again how will he go into fornication god forbid well agree but it says all uncleanness all uncleanness all even the appearance of evil all uncleanness private hidden personal unknown by anybody all uncleanness and then it says covetousness covetousness coveting what belongs to others you have your own leave other people with their property and of course if you need you can go to the you don't have to be covetous all that you desire when you pray make your requests and desires known unto god what would you have to be covetous when everything is available for everybody if you can pray that's the reason why as you see other people being blessed other people being enriched other people having their own inheritance there's no reason to be envious there's no reason to be jealous there is no reason to be covetous there's no reason to run after what other people have 
there's no reason to wish that other people will not enjoy their blessing that doesn't change anything in your life doesn't change anything in your home for example if you go to burn the furniture in the house of another person that doesn't make the furniture in your house look better your furniture see your furniture if you go to somebody else's house and you go to burn all their curtains that doesn't make the curtains in your house look any better or cleaner that means then leave others with what they have their wives don't cover their wives their husbands don't cover their husbands their job their position their privilege don't cover it as it becometh saints they are called to be saints chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 18 chapter 6 verse 18 it says in verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all who all saints you see then in Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 we're called to be saints and the ministry is to perfect is to purify is to make stronger the people of God who are to be saints every time we minister we help the people of God to become more like saints other than sinners look at something again I'm coming back to chapter 1 in Ephesians and you'll see this word us look at this in chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us he has blessed us saints saints there's a privilege there's a glorious power there's a glorious provision he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ blessed us look at chapter 2 in chapter 2 we're looking at verse 6 and has raised us that's what he's done for the saints in chapter 2 in chapter 1 he has blessed us in chapter 2 he has raised us and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus he has blessed us all spiritual blessings he has raised us up to sit together in heavenly places chapter 3 verse 20 chapter 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or see according to the power that worketh in us see what the lord has done for the saints he's blessed us he's raised us up and he's working in us chapter 4 verse 7 in chapter 4 verse 7 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ he has given us grace abundant grace sufficient grace, sustaining grace see what he has done for us what a privilege for the saints of God chapter 5 verse 2 and walk in love as Christ also has loved us he has loved us he has blessed us he has raised us up he is working in us he has given us sufficient sustaining grace he has loved us as a result of that we don't have any excuse now to be weak we are strong in Jesus name chapter 6 verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might because he has blessed us be strong because he has raised us up to sit together in heavenly places with Christ be strong because that mighty irresistible power is working in us be strong 
And because he has given us abundant grace, sufficient grace, sustaining grace, be strong. And because he has loved us and he has given himself for us as a sacrifice, be strong. And then stand, verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins got about and having the breastplate of righteousness. You have the truth, your loins got about with truth. And then the breastplate of righteousness. As a result of that, we are strong and we'll stand, keep on standing in Jesus' name. Point number one, the great privilege of restored sons. Number two, the glorious power of renewed saints. Number three, the greater priesthood of replenished stewards. Replenished stewards. Replenished stewards. You see what the Lord has done as we came here from the first day. And these messages have been coming in various ways and from different ministers. The Lord has replenished us, refilled us, refreshed us. He has brought another deposit of the knowledge of truth, of the word of the Lord. He has brought that into our lives again, replenishing. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 31, reading from verse 22. How long? Will ye go about to the backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this peace.